Would everyone please rise for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance, and please remember today uh, Maurice Hinchy and Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Thank you. Bonasek? Here. Turnbull? Here. Amo? Here. Anagnostakis? Present. Benton? Here. Berkman? Here. Benelli? Here. Cheney? Here. Dillard? Here. DeSavo? Present. Ekis? Here. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Chemnitz? Here. Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Briskevich, Sullivan, Here. Vero, Brescia, 21 present. Okay, I'd like to invite up to the front of this auditorium um, for a proclamation recognizing uh, Deputy Sheriff Greg Kozlowski, Kozlowski Sheriff Carl DeVoice under Sheriff Ken Jones, Assistant under Sheriff Anthony Weed, Chief Chuck Dennis Perry, and Sergeant Andrew Frank, Veterans Affairs Liaison to the Sheriff's Office. I'm going to let you do the introduction and uh, explanation while we're here today, and I'll do the proclamation from the legislature afterwards. That's okay? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, chairman, legislators, uh, anybody else? Uh, elected officials. Any other elected officials in the, in the audience? I don't see anybody out there. Okay. Uh, anybody, uh, welcome. Uh, today we're here to um, uh, recognize the uh, service uh, of uh, Deputy uh, Craig Kozlowski, who uh, has just returned within the past uh, couple months uh, from a 10-month tour in Afghanistan. And, um, what I believe is that he worked on a detail, that um, on an escort detail, that he would escort, um, uh, you know, dignitaries and um, you know other uh, convoys, um, you know, through uh, areas that uh, were uh, in control of, of the enemy. And it's just uh, great to have him back, uh, safe and sound. Um, and we uh, really salute, um, you know, your courage and, and your service to this country. Um, men and women like you. Uh, that uh, serve our country you know, allow us to hold meetings free and open uh, as we are today on our view. Thank you, Sheriff. Does anybody else want to say anything? Your, uh, hand? Okay. Andrew, you're okay? Okay. Greg, I, I can't thank you enough for serving our country. Uh, just another accolade for the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Uh, there's so many accolades in that office, but this, you certainly make us proud, and thank you for your service and what you've done over there. Uh, it gives me a great deal of pride on behalf of the legislature to present you with this proclamation. Proclamation of the Legislature of the County of Orange, recognizing Deputy Sheriff Greg Kozlowski for his continued military service to our country. Whereas there is no higher duty than to serve our nation and its armed forces during military conflict, and whereas America's men and women in uniform perform their duties with utmost dignity, honor, and professionalism, with each and every assignment and in theaters in the world. Together, these service members make up the greatest force for the freedom and security the world has ever known. From their earliest training to the thick of battle, they stand together, united in their love of country, teaching all the true meaning of duty, honor, and strength. And whereas Gregory Goslowski exemplifies all that the founders of our nation sought in the freedom fighter, serves in honor and distinction in the U.S. Army National Guard, assigned to the 107th Military Policy Company as Sergeant. He has had two deployments to Afghanistan 
2011 to 12, and 2016 to 17. In his most recent deployment to Kabul, Kabul, Afghanistan, as a member of the Protective Services Detail, PSD, of the 107th MP Company. Gregory Kozlowski has been assigned as an assistant squad leader and lead vehicle commander. Deputy Gregory Kozlowski conducted combat, combat operations throughout the Kabul cluster and provided security during the key leader engagement engagements, excuse me, to include U.S. political advisor, Secretary of Defense, Afghan local politicians, theater command sergeant, major, allied commander, theater operations, general various contractors, and other military personnel. And whereas it is fitting and appropriate to affirm our strong and unconditional support to all our service members and families while they endure long deployments, separation cope with, with reintegration, transition, employment, and well-being, for it is essential to military strength and readiness and contribu uh, contributes contributes, excuse me, to the resilience of service members and their families. Now, therefore, be resolved and proclaim that we, the legislature of the County of Orange, do hereby designate this day of recognition of Deputy Sheriff Gregory Kozlowski in acknowledgement of his sacrifice and service to his country, and we do further commend these sentiments to all the people of the County of Orange so that they may, may be mind, excuse me, mindful of Deputy Sheriff Gregory Kozlowski and his service to our great country and accord him due appreciation, esteem, respect, and honor. Given the seventh day of December, 2017, L. Stephen Brescia, Chairman of the Legislature. Yeah, we have one speaker, Scott Tarpley, Next Level Kennels in Pine Bush. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Scott Tarpley. I'm the owner of Next Level Kennels in Pine Bush. Uh, on October 21st through the 22nd, we had a fundraiser at the Angry Orchard facility in Walden. The purpose of this fundraiser was to buy a ballistic vest for Orange County's newest canine, Canine Skip. With the help of Angry Orchard, numerous individuals, and several local businesses, we exceeded that goal. Uh, today, uh, up for vote, you have in front of you Reg Legislative Request 2017-242. I'm here today in support of this. Uh, once, uh, once we have approval from you, we'll order his vest and have it ready by the time he graduates in mid to late January. Uh, we want to keep our canines safe while they are on the street protecting us. This was a great experience for us, and we look forward to donating vests to other canines in Orange County. Thank you. Majority Leader Bonasek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes of September 2nd and October 5th, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Majority Leader Bonasek again. Thank you. I move to vote collectively on agenda item numbers 35 through 65, which are tax resolutions. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry.
Any referrals or withdrawals or consents? Okay, I guess we're on to agenda item number one. Okay, A is, yeah, receiving file. Legislators Hines and Faggio, resolution fixing date, time, and place of meeting to organize the county legislature in 2018, pursuant to section 151 of the county law. The date is January 4th, 2018 at 3.30, with a snow date of January 5th, 2018 at 3.30 in the Legislative Chamber, Orange County Government Center, 255 Main Street in the Village of Ocean. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikes? Fagion? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Padu, Riskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, 3A, uh, receiving file. Number two, I'm sorry, number two first. Legislators DeSalvo, Bonasek, Benton, O'Donnell. Resolution amending and reaffirming the Orange County Department of General Services procurement policy. Second. Yes, Legislator Kulasek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in the draft, I don't—I didn't get to read through this whole uh, one that's presented to us today. But there were some references to the commissioner by name, who would be, or his designee, would be awarding contracts. Um, and I think that the, in the draft, it had his name specifically, not the commissioner. And, and in this presented is his name in there as the as the He's still in there. last page. Okay. Still in there, yes. Yeah. So I don't think that uh, James Burpo should be listed. It should be the commissioner or his designee. Also the limit up to a hundred thousand dollar for contracting uh, it started out at thirty-five thousand uh, dollars three or four or five years ago when this procurement policy was first enacted, and then went to seventy-five thousand not too soon after that. Now we're up to a hundred thousand dollars for the commissioner and or his designee to approve. And personally, I think that it's a little bit much for for one department or one fellow to be uh, approved. I'll be voting no for this as we go. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call. Can I ask a question? Yep. Are we going to vote on removing his name first? He just mentioned it. But I, I have not. to make a amendment. Is that a I motion, Jim? Is that a motion to? I'd like to make that motion. Yes, sir. That's in order to amend this to remove any designation as Jim Burpo or the name of the commissioner, whoever it may be, at the time to uh, <coughs> approve any contracts. There's a second it should, it should read this com as the commissioner shall, not, not uh, right. any. I, I need to check the charter on that. Yes. Kevin, did you have another question? Or was that no, I just wanted to, is there, if he's going to remove the name, it should be in a form of a motion to the second, and we all vote on it, and then vote on the big thing. Great. There already, already was. Wayne, you want to speak? Deputy County Exec? Okay, Stacy, can you come up and speak on the microphone or we can hand you one? While Antoinette's looking it up, that's a good time. Been able to pull it up yet, but I believe it's law 104B requires both the name and title. The name rather than commission? Yeah, the name and the title of anyone that's required to be noted in our procurement I'm sorry, are you saying state law requires the name? I believe so, yes. I haven't been able to pull it up, but I believe it's section, uh, general municipal law, section 104B. <coughs> Yeah. 
not required under our charter. But if it's under state law, we're required to do that, sir. Is that referred to in this document? Not 104 specifically. But our procurement policy is pursuant to general municipal law. Do you have a copy of the state, sir? Not with me. Not part of the committee. Legislator Nagdastakis. Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that if New York State Procurement Code 
Do we have all the independents for this place? There's two independents now, I understand, right? <laughs> Doubled your numbers for, the, for, the, for another yeah, three just weeks. Even though you went of the 15, I got 100% approval. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nekvistakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? <laughs> Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. Okay, 4A receiving file number 4, another local law. Legislators DeSalvo, Bonasek, Benton, and Agnostakis, Benelli, Hines, Kulisek, Berkman, Dillard, O'Donnell. Local law introductory number 6 of 2017. A local law providing for a tax exemption upon real property based upon the maximum income exemption liability level for persons with disabilities, limited incomes, pursuant to section 459C of the real property tax law. Second. Discussion? All Republicans added. ECAS added. The Duke added. Okay. Amo and, and your caucus? Okay. Independence caucus. Roll call. Yes. Turnbull? Amel, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSavo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Briskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. Okay, 5A receiving file, another local law, number 5. Legislators DeSavo, Chemnitz, Benton, Nagnostakis, Benelli, Hines, Kulisek, Berkman, Dillard, O'Donnell. Local law introductory number 7 of 2017. A local law amending local law number three of 2008 in relation to exercising certain options with regard to a real property tax exemption for Cold War veterans as authorized by real property tax law section 458B. Second. Okay, it's local law number seven, which is agenda item number five. I'm sorry. Discussion? Yes, ECAS added, Republicans added, Independents added, and yes, Roseanne, or Mike Paduke added. Roseanne, you have a. Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. Yes, Solomon. I'm sorry. Legislator Sullivan as well. Roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amel, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSavo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. Okay, number six. Legislators Benton and Nagnostakis. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing the county executive to transfer the county's allocation of 3,951,945 in unused federally allocated qualified energy conservation bond, QECB bonding authority, for use by the Energy Improvement Corporation in partnership with the county and the establishment of a new energy efficient financial support program to benefit Orange County property owners. Second. Discussion? Yes. All Dems added? Okay. All Republicans too? No. No? You except to settle. You have to abstain? Okay, independence, yes. Everybody except to solve abstention. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Abstention? Yes. Ekis? Ekis? Pagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Gresham. 20 ayes, 1 abstention. Okay, number 7. Legislators Ekis, O'Donnell, DeSalvo, and Bonasek. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature urging New York State to increase state support for Cornell Cooperative Extension County Associations in the state of New York. Second. Discussion? All Dems? All Republicans, I would think. All Independents? Everybody? Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull, yes. Amel, yes. Benagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. Okay, number eight. Legislators Cheney and O'Donnell. Resolution designating Orange County Tourism as the Tourism Promotion Agency of Orange County, pursuant to Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull, Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Gresham. 21 ayes. 
Okay, number nine. Legislators Bureau and Turnbull. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a proposed right-of-way dedication parcel in the town of Chester. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vera? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay. Number 9-1. Legislators Fagione, Benton, Paduk, Benelli. Resolution confirming the appointment of Eric A. Denanga as Commissioner of the Department of Public Works for Orange County by the County Executive, pursuant to Section 8-1 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Yes, Legislator uh, Hines and then Keeney, then Benelli, and then, oh, you just want to be added? Okay, well, you guys just want to be added or you want to speak? Oh, Kevin Hines wants to speak, and then, and then Barry, and then Katie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to uh, support Eric Tanega. I think he's a fantastic candidate. I've known him for over 20 years. Even when he uh, came here, I told him, you're crazy if you take the job, but I hope you do. So that was my ring of endorsement for him. And I've done that with a few other commissioners as well. But uh, not only did Eric come on board with tons of experience, but we were working on the Clove Road Bridge there in my district, and he took it, uh, grabbed it, and had people work on Saturday to try to get it done in a timely fashion because it really affected the people in that area of Wilming Grove. So, Eric, thanks for coming. I appreciate all your hard work. I know you're going to do a fantastic job. In the past few months, I've had the opportunity to work with Eric and have found him to be knowledgeable and possessing a strong background in the fields of engineering that are required for the position. And in addition to that, um, I would also point out that as required by the position, he is a professional engineer and his educational credentials include a degree in civil engineering from my alma mater, Clarkson University, um, whose men's and women's hockey teams are both currently ranked number three in the nation. Thank you. And I'd like to be out of this sponsor, please. Absolutely. Legislator Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had the pleasure and the distinct honor to be in on the initial interviews uh, way back when, when Eric was first considering coming on board as our public works commissioner. Um, at that particular time, that didn't come to fruition, uh, but today I'm very happy to see that he has come back. I have found him to be very, very professional. His resume is absolutely impeccable, and I happen to have the opportunity to know him when he was formerly working for a local engineering company. So I would like to welcome him aboard and I would like to congratulate the county executive for making a very good choice. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, I'll just say for Duke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What I'd like to say is that I'm a person who didn't know Eric. But I'd like to say, initially, uh, I'm on the Physical Services Committee. There's a safety issue in my community, and it was unusual for me to get such a quick response from Mr. Denega. Uh, they've been out to inspect this situation, and the reason I'm talking today is because I know they haven't completed it yet, so this is like a little push to say, thanks for working with me on this, and I know that you're going to get that done before too long. Legislator Amo, Party Leader Amo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I really, I, the very answer to my question, I wanted to know though, if he, had, if the committee had been involved in any of the interviews, and I, I now hear they have. I must, I must kind of disagree because, uh, I mean, I grew up in the area of Clarkson, uh, on the, up in the Canadian border. Yeah, they get a good hockey team. Well, you know why? Because they only have two seasons: winter and the Fourth of July. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Eric, I'd like to welcome you aboard. Uh, great choice. Uh, you, it's, you can see by your first two meetings of physical service that you attend, it's going to be a seamless transition from Chris Vibrock to you. You bring a lot of credentials to the job, as the, all the speakers have said. Um, and whatever the county exec said about you Monday night, I don't agree. You look good. Who's making fun of you and me Monday night, right? My full Monty on my Christmas card? But, oh well. So welcome aboard. <laughs> Okay, roll call, I'm sorry. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Benagnostakis? Banton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Paduk? 
Riskevich Sullivan Vera, Russia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 10, a bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Turnbull, Benelli, Benton, and Hines. Bond resolution dated December 7, 2017. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the construction of various bridge improvements, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 500,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 500,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagion, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Padute, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Russia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 11, another bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Ruskevich, Turnbull, Benton, and O'Donnell. On resolution dated December 7, 2017. On resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the replacement of Denton Bridge, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $1,800,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 1,800,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Vagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 12. Legislators Paduk, Turnbull, Benton, and Kulisek. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature assuming lead agency status under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEQRA, with respect to the replacement of Maple Glen Bridge Number 1 in the town of Walk Hill. Classifying the action as unlisted and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amel, yes. and Agnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 13. Legislators Turnbull, Benton, and Berkman. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing a fee acquisition of a parcel of real property situated in the town of Walk Hill, County of Orange, State of New York, in connection with a bridge replacement project known as the Maple Glen Bridge No. 1 replacement. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Russia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 14, another bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Padu, Turnbull, Benton, and DeSalvo. Bond resolution dated December 7, 2017. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing additional financing for the planning of the replacement of Maple Glen Bridge No. 1 in the town of Walk Hill, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 750000 appropriating 700,000 therefore in addition to the 50,000 previously appropriated and authorizing the issuance of 700,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Okay, discussion? Roll call. Bonasek, Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 15. Legislators Kulisek, Benton, and DeSalvo. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2017 Orange County budget for the Orange County Department of Public Works, Environmental Facilities and Services, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Regis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to note, uh, since it has here about the state reimbursement for TVs, that the actual cost for depositing a TV in our transfer station is going up as of January 1st. Uh, and the second thing I'd like to tell everybody, since I don't know how often you visit the transfer station, but do not go between like mm, 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock to the Newburgh transfer station. You'll be there for a couple hours. Now that you're retired, you go there more often, right? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> okay, discussion? Roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, 
DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 16. Legislators Berkman, Benton, and Agnostakis, Benelli, DeSalvo, Hines, Pulisek, Dillard, O'Donnell. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature urging the governor and legislature of, a New York, of New York State to exempt county tuition chargeback obligations for the Fashion Institute of Technology. Thank you. Discussion? All Dems, all Republicans, all Independents, and Jeff, I'm sure you want to speak to this. So go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is an issue which uh, hopefully we can all support because we have a $4 million deficit uh, when we talk about our community college expenses, we we pay out six million and we get back two million. So it's it's an issue that we should uh, hope people keep up on this after I'm gone. Uh, the easiest one for us to put pressure on is FIT Fashion Institute because it's a four year actually has master's programs as well. It's the only one, uh, the only educational institution that I believe uh, is treated as a community college. So we should press the state of New York to to, uh, to chip in, and they did this once before. Also, this issue was uh, adopted by uh, NISAC, so we could get some institutional support in Albany. So uh, I hope we all vote for it. I think we will. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull, gotcha. Amo, yep. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 17. Legislators Chemnitz and Ikes. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Executive on behalf of the Orange County Department of Residential Health Care Services to accept and authorize intergovernmental transfer payment and to decrease appropriated 2017 county taxation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikes? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vera? Brescia? 21 eyes. And number 18. Legislators Chemnitz and Ikes. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to appropriate third year budget period funds and accept and appropriate additional funds from the New York State Department of Health, pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Okay. All Dems, all Republicans, all Independents, everybody. Roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Nagastakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSabo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, of Russia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 19. Legislators Chemnitz and Ikes. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to accept and appropriate additional grant funds from the New York State Department of Health AIDS Institute. Pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Okay. All Dems, all Republicans, Independents too? Yes, okay. Everybody. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSavo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 20. Legislators Hines, Bonasek, DeSavo, Ikes, Fagione, Paduk, Vera. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County District Attorney's Office to accept and appropriate grant funds from New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. You want to be added to Kulisak, Myrna? Yep. All Dems, all Republicans, and all Independents. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? And Agnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 21. Legislators DeSalvo and Fagione. Resolution authorizing the county executive in connection, I'm sorry, in, in conjunction with the Orange County Sheriff's Office to accept funds from the New York State Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. 
Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSavo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, now number 22, I'm going to have the clerk read it, but the sheriff, the sheriff Du Bois is up here to, to clarify something on this resolution as well. So read the, read the um, resolution, we'll get the first one, or the second, and then the sheriff will speak. Legislators Hines, Bonasek, DeSalvo, Ecus, Faggio, and Paduk Firo. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a certain gift on behalf of the Orange County Sheriff's Office pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Second. Sheriff Du Bois. So I want to clarify, uh, I heard Mr. Tarpley speak before. Um, I believe the resolution reads it's uh, given on behalf of the Dooley family uh, and Mr. Tarpley. Um, that's incorrect. Um, the Dooley family went out and bought a vest on their own. Um, Mr. Tarpley uh, was unaware of that. And he is going to donate a vest in the future when we need it. So this is just from the Dooley family. And we have the, um, the vest uh, is at KDI right now being uh, embroidered. So I just want to let you know that clarification because it was incorrect that it's Tarpley and Dooley. It's just the Dooley's right now. Okay, so the next level kennel should be taken out and just the Dooley family remain in. That's correct. Do we need a motion on that? Can we just, we do need a motion? Somebody want to make that motion? Oh, Matt, okay. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Done. Any other questions? Uh, perhaps, Sheriff, if you could clarify the email that at least I received, I don't know who else, I thought this was an easy thing about an individual looking to get their money back from the Sheriff's Office for the donation of, of this. It would be from the Sheriff's Office, <clears throat> it would be from whoever held the fundraiser. We had nothing to do with the fundraiser. Okay, uh, so that would be the, the tarp, uh, Mr. Tarpley and uh, the Dooley's held the fundraiser. We did not hold the fundraiser. So, not going to get any money back in the sheriff's office. Okay. So, since the fact that the Dooley's already donated the best we have it already, that won't affect the monetary, the money? No, that's an issue separate and above that's being investigated by our office. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Annette? Anagnostakis? Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 23. Legislators DeSalvo and Paduk. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Probation <coughs> to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? All Dems, all Republicans, and I think it, I'm going to start looking at Curly. <laughs> you defer to Curly? <laughs> okay, roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 24. Legislators Fagione, Benton, Ekis, and DeSalvo. Resolution authorizing a contract to be made between the County of Orange, the Sheriff of Orange County, and the Orange County Correction Officers Benevolent Association in relation to terms and conditions of employment pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law, known as the Public Employees Fair Employment Act. Second. Question? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Brescia. 21 eyes. Number 25. Legislators Fagione, Paduk, and DeSalvo. 
an act to establish a new salary schedule therein applicable to all employees of the County of Orange who are included in the negotiating unit represented by the Orange County Correction Officers Benevolent Association. Question. Both one. Honestly? Yes. Turnbull? Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Ikis, Fagion, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 26. Legislators Paduk, Fagion, and DeSalvo. Resolution authorizing the making of an agreement between the County of Orange and the Superior Officers Unit of the Orange County Chapter of the Civil Service Employees Association, Inc. in relation to the terms and conditions of employment pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law known as the Public Employees Fair Employment Act. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 27. Legislators Fagione, Benton, DeSalvo, and Bonasek. An act amending Act Number 22 of 1971 as last amended by Act Number 12 of 2015 by substituting a new salary schedule therein applicable to all employees of the County of Orange who are included in the negotiating unit represented by the Superior Officers Unit of the Orange County Chapter of the Civil Service Employees Association, Inc. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikes? Fagion? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations for all the hard work involved in that. Both contracts. Okay, number 28. Legislators Benton, Paduk, and Hines, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reallocate safety and loss control specialists at the Orange County Division of Risk Management pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Honasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikes? Fagion? Hines? Kemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 29. Legislators Paduk, Fagione, Kemnitz, and Ikes. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to amend Act Number 26 of 1989 at the Orange County Department of Health to add that a secretary position is grant funded pursuant to Section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 30A receiving file, 30. Good. Five minute recess, okay. Okay, we ready to go? On agenda item number 30 is where we were. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to veto the county executive's recommendation. To override. To override the county executive's veto of $50,000, putting back $50,000 into the tourism department for specialty payments. No, I, I heard you do it. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, what's that? Okay. We have a motion and a second. Discussion on the motion and a second? Yes. Okay. Uh, did everybody get the motion? Are we okay? Are you okay? Repeat it. Sure. I'd like to make a motion to override the veto of the county executive in putting back the $50,000 in the tourism department for specialty payments. Um, I'm well aware that $50,000 is not a tremendous amount of money on our budget. However, 
we already realized that the county executive has at his fingertips to over $200,000 to do with as he wants. And the reason why I would take this out of um, the tourism department is because I believe we accounted for it in the contingency department. And if we didn't, I'd like to do that and put it back into contingency simply so that whatever specialty payments are made come through the legislature and the money's not just free to hand out. I think we were all kind of caught by surprise in the last couple of years um, that these payments were made, some of them without our knowledge at all, and we couldn't participate in the activity or anything else like that. At least it will inform us when and where the money will be spent. I'm not looking to in any way reduce his ability to hand out this $50,000. I just would like it to remain in the control of the county legislature. All right, I, I just want to clarify uh, for the public uh, the process on uh, the budget. Uh, so the budget is presented to the Orange County Legislature by the county executive uh, on or about uh, uh, October 1st. And then the legislature reviews the budget and makes any modifications, revisions, reductions, strikeouts to the budget. Uh, that's pursuant to uh, New York State County law and uh, our Orange County Charter. And so the Orange County Legislature made several uh, revisions, strike, strikeout, additions, modifications uh, to the uh, budget. And that was uh, uh, duly adopted by this legislature on the on November 12th, 14th. And uh, then we submitted, uh, the clerk submitted those modifications to uh, the county executive. And then he has until December 1st of 2017 uh, to uh, make any, uh, to veto any of the changes made by the legislature. One such change that he vetoed was $50,000 that he originally add, he originally had in his budget for the Department of Tourism. And the legislature, in their modifications, uh, took those monies out. And so now there is a, uh, a motion before the legislature to override that veto so that those monies would then once again be removed from the uh, operating budget uh, for 2018. Okay, discussion on the motion and second? Okay, I would just like to add that I would hope my colleagues don't vote for this override. Um, I think this money has, has been well spent, and, and there have been many press conferences throughout the year where the money was spent. Um, we did get a second. There was a second. Jeff Perkins seconded it. Okay. Um, there was no discussion, so that's why I started. Um, many community events throughout the county, the county exec spent this money on. Uh, money that is brought in through tourism brings quite a bit of uh, revenue dollars to the county and to the local communities. Um, I just have a few here that, that some of the money was spent on. The 10K race, I believe, in Middletown, Village of Maybrook received money, Village of Goshen, Village of Warwick, Town of Montgomery, Village of Highland Falls, Village of Walden, Town of Tuxedo, Village of Greenwood Lake, Town of Monroe. I know the Village of Montgomery received some money. Um, and I, I think it was money that was well spent. But if, if we want to have uh, some little bit tighter restrictions and communication with the county exec's office, as Barry Cheney had mentioned to me, so be it. But I think this is money that's well spent. It's much less money that was uh, allocated in years past for the uh, county exec's predecessor. And, uh, you know, money was spent in the city of Port Jervis, I believe, too. Tom, you were involved with that. And uh, the mayor, Mayor Decker, was to, as well. And um, we can certainly uh, enhance the communication between the county exec's office. But a legislator Bidouk brought up to me about us having uh, something comparable to the to this for the legislators, and I'm certainly in favor of that. I mean, it'd have to be structured and we'd have to work it out, but I'm in favor of that in conjunction or not necessarily in conjunction with the county exec's office. And I think that that deserves merit in uh, discussion after the first of the year. And I think it's something that for a modest amount, $5,000 per legislator, let's say, could be, uh, could be enacted. So I would encourage legislators to please not vote for this override. I think it was money very well spent throughout the year and uh, I think there was transparency. If there needs to be a little more transparency, we'll certainly ask for that. But that's my opinion. Uh, Legislator Berkman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If in the event that this uh, override attempt does not succeed, 
uh, I would just urge that the county executive, as you said, Mr. Chairman, uh, coordinate the the uh, activity a bit better with the legislature, so we have a, a you will have a more inclusive feeling about it. Oh, Senator Perdue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just on what Chris said, in past years, we've been notified in the beginning of our budget book of the multiple items that's been supported throughout the years. It was, very, it was easy to read, and now, during the last couple of years, they've been hidden throughout the budget. So actually, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't think it was intentional, maybe it was, um, but we, we did have first-hand look at what we were funding, libraries, the partnership, farmland protection, in the, in the rate of 200 or more, close to a, a quarter of a million dollars. So then we actually knew. The legislature had control, we approved the budget, he got to give the monies out, uh, he invited people, no question about it. But the fact that this $50,000, we don't really have a say on either. Like you said, Steve, better communication. Give us the list in the front of the book. I'd ask that right now. In any new budget books, you tell us where uh, throughout the budget the money is going to be spent on. We could very well, I could very well support it. I've been at a, a couple of these uh, events where the money's been handed out in the city of Middletown for good causes. It's just the fact that it seems like we're losing hold of what our responsibilities are, and that's not what we want to do. Thank you. Okay. Roll call. No is to not vote for the override, correct? Bonasek? Turnbull? Yes. Amo? No. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? No. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? No. Dillard? No. DeSalvo? No. Ikis? Yes. Fagione? No. Hines? No. Kemnitz? Yes. Kulasek? Yes. O'Donnell? No. Hadou? Yes. Ruskevich? No. Sullivan? Bureau? No. Gresham? No. Motion to override fails. Seven ayes, 14 noes. Okay, 31. No, 30. No, 30. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. 30. Legislator Benton. Resolution finally adopting the proposed budget of Orange County for the year 2018, pursuant to section 360 of the county law and section 4.07 of the Orange County Charter and Administrative Code. Second. Legislator Nagastakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so now we'll be voting on the actual uh, budget as was amended by the legislators. Um, and the uh, the change that the executive made on that one line item that we attempted to override but couldn't override. So some legislators may be tempted to say, I'm not going to vote for this because I couldn't override that one line item. So I'll make the plea that I make every year just so everybody understands the process. Um, if you vote against the budget because you didn't like that you couldn't override that one line item, you are voting against the legislators. You are voting against your own changes that you made to the budget 15 or 16 amendments we made one of which is one of my pet projects funding the library uh to a, a better tune than it was by the executive so uh, a no vote to this budget means you're voting no to all the changes that you made and you're saying i want the original budget that the county executive put in that i didn't like because i changed 15 items but now i'm going to give up those changes so it's just my pet peeve that i explain that every year but sometimes it just goes on deaf ears thank you Thank you for the clarification, Senator Langstakis. Any other further discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Yes. Ikis? Fagione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Kemnitz? Yes. Kulasek? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Padoue? Yes. Ruskevich? Yes. Sullivan? Bureau? Yes. Russia, 21 eyes. Okay. Number 31. 
Legislator Benton, resolution making appropriations for the conduct of the government of Orange County, Orange County Social Services District, Orange County Sewer District Number One, the Orange County Small Watershed Protection District Number One for Cromline Creek, and the Beaver Dam Lake District for the fiscal year 2018, pursuant to sections 356 and 360 of the county law and sections 4 8 and 4 9b of the Orange County Administrative Code. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Amo, yes. and Agnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Biscavich, Sullivan, Vera, Gresha. 21 eyes. Okay, number 32. Legislator Benton, resolution provided for the raising of taxes required by the Orange County budget for general government purposes Social Services District purposes, Orange County Sewer District Number One purposes, Orange County Small Watershed Protection District Number One for Crown Line Creek purposes, and Beaver Dam Lake District purposes, and levying taxes pursuant to Section 360 of the County Law, Section 900 of the Real Property Tax Law, and Section 4.08 of the Orange County Charter and Administrative Code. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek, Turnbull, Amo, Nagnostakis. Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Gresham. 21 eyes. And number 33. Legislator Benton, resolution adopting the 2018 capital program as amended, pursuant to the Orange County Charter, section 4.07. Second. Discussion? Roll call. What's the matter? Uh, the amount should be 250000 not 25000 Oh, okay. <coughs> no? Yeah. We're on number 33. Yeah. The amendment was for $250,000 adjustment to the capital. Okay. Uh, who can clarify that? Neil, do you know? That was your, yeah. Neil said it's 250. Okay. So we don't need a motion to change it, right? We just need to correct it to 250. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for catching that. Okay. Neil said yes. I mean, he's a consultant more now, but we still trust him. It's 250. Okay. Did somebody make a motion? I mean, did somebody second the motion? Okay. No, I mean, I'm sorry. Did somebody second the motion as a whole? Not the. Not, okay. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek. Yes. Turnbull. Amo. Yes. Anagnostakis. No. Benton. Berkman. Benelli. Cheney. Dillard. DeSalvo. Ekis. Fagione. Hines. Chemnitz. Kulisek. O'Donnell. Paduk. Ruskevich. Sullivan. Vera, Gresham, 20 ayes, 1 no. Okay, number 34. Legislator Benton, resolution making appropriation to Cornell Cooperative Extension Association of Orange County pursuant to subdivision 8 of section 224 of the county law. Second. Discussion. All thanks. All, you just want to add it? All and Barry added? All Republicans added. Early? All independents? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Veggio, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, now we've got 35 through 65, correct? <coughs> Collectively? Correct. Okay, <laughs> we don't need to read anything then. Okay. Discussion? Yes. You want to be added to one of those? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I just have a question. Uh, every single resolution is levying the unpaid water charges on, or whatever they are onto the property. But number 65 says a resolution providing for the levy of tax against properties. Are there any in particular, like uh, yours or mine? Or I mean, what is that one about? I, I don't. That was not specific to any. Right here. Resolution yeah. providing. Oh. Okay. I, it's just a schedule. Yeah. You get to pick or? 
65. Okay, on number 65, that has to do with uh, properties that receive exemptions or um, you know, exemptions for agricultural districts. Uh, and forestation. Uh, so these are given to us uh, by uh, Real Property and the uh, res uh, respective municipalities. Uh, so it has to do with agricultural okay. lands. That's great. And maybe we could add that in the future so we know what it is. Um, yeah. Well, it is in the resolution. Okay. And I, I think all the, um, the party leaders get a copy of all the resolutions. Okay, Legislator Berkman. Yes. Uh, Please have me as a no on number 53 has to do with the the we noted the sewer, sewer district. Okay. Roll call. Honestly? Yes. Honestly? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Berkman, no, 253. Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagion, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Riskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Gresham. 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, we've got uh, two speakers, it looks like. Scott Martins first, Public Health and Safety, and Marianne McDonough following. for allowing me to speak uh, to you today. Uh, my name is Scott Martens, as you probably know by now. Um, I live in the town of West Town, or in West Town, in the town of Minnesink. Um, I wanted to give you a quick update on some recent events concerning the CPV power plant and the uh, pipeline that will connect the Millennium Pipeline to the power plant with frac gas. Um, just this morning, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals uh, for the United States, the federal court ruled that the FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, uh, could have jurisdiction um, despite the fact that the Clean Water Act, um, which is a federal act, explicitly states, uh, gives the states the right to decide on water quality issues. Um, and in, in addition, it lifted a temporary stay of construction that was placed on the construction of the pipeline. Um, so it's really a um, unfortunate news that we got today, which is why I'm here. Um, as you know, the legislature, you guys, passed almost unanimously, 15 to 1, vote, uh, a resolution uh, supporting the state's right on this exact issue. Um, so in this context, I ask and I urge all of you to stand behind your vote and, and call our state senators, call the governor, call the New York State DEC, and, um, and uh, as the representatives of the people of Orange County that you represent, um, and tell them that you have their back in this fight um, against an obvious and egregious federal overreach of power. Um, you may have seen in the Times Herald record uh, that a nesting pair of bald eagle have been discovered literally 30 feet from the pipeline route. I saw this with my own two eyes. Not just one bald eagle, two bald eagles are nesting 30 feet from the pipeline uh, alignment. This is illegal for them, for Millennium and for FERC, to allow Millennium to start any sort of construction now that they are there. And with that being said, I, I realize you know that you guys uh, have no um, jurisdictional um, authority um, to pass a law um, in this regard, but I do contend, as I have in the past, that it is your moral obligation and, it, and it's your duty to stand up for the citizens of your districts and support the efforts to refuse this pipeline, just like the New York State DEC did, and to stop construction on the frac gas power plant until the corruption charges 
which allowed this facility to even be permitted in the first place, are decided in a court of law, which is in the process of happening. We just have to be patient and allow it to happen. So please, I urge you again, stand up for the people. You all know that this is the right thing to do. I know you all do. So please, take some moral imperative here. Stand up for the people that you're meant to represent. This is terrible for Orange County on every single level. So please do that. And I just want to take one more second and say um, thank you very much for, um, for working with me, those of you that have, have, have uh, been working with me on this. And I look forward to, uh, to the new legislature forming and um, working with you in the future on issues like this. So thank you very much. Have a great day. Can you hear me? Did the clock start yet? Yep. Better hurry up. <laughs> there are so many similarities from what I'm seeing between what's happening in Washington, D.C. and Orange County, New York. After all, Trump is controlling Washington, D.C. and the country, and I keep hearing over and over that Orange County, New York is Trump country. I have examples of that. Sean Patrick Maloney, in his most recent fundraising lesson let, letter, tells us he's one of 12 Democrats to win in a Trump district. And yes, our own very recently re-elected county executive was in fact a Trump delegate, as well as the chairperson of the Republican Party being a Trump delegate. As you know, many of the behaviors in Washington, D.C. and here also have striking similarities. Uh, and one example of that was what happened right before the 11-17 election, where we had incumbent Steve Newhouse trying to connect his Democratic challenger, Pat Davis, through a diner video with a meeting with a Hasidic man. What a despicable act to fan the fires of hate and prejudice. I believe they call it anti-Semitism, and all for what? Votes. Yet he also was the one, Steve Newhouse, who got the most votes from the Hasidic community, both in 2013 and 2017. We have another Washington, D.C. similarity here in Orange County, and it involves bullying. Oh, Orange County sponsors anti-bullying month and the charade of being opposed to bullying. Nationally, we have a president who bullies those who disagree with him. And locally, we have an Orange County legislative chair, Steve Newhouse, who bullies those that disagree with him, unless they agree to the Steve Newhouse Republican agenda. Just ask Matt Turnbull, Jeff Berkman, or Roseanne Sullivan. Even though parts of the rest of the country and parts of New York State are catching on to the policies, positions, and platforms of evil, corruption, hate, bullying, sexism, pay to play, and backroom deals that they are detrimental to us nationally and locally to our county. I cannot explain why Orange County voters have been so slow to grasp this concept. While the voters are not there yet, at least the Times Herald record in one of its editorials clearly is there. And this was in reference to the LLC political contribution policy. And while it says, while it would be nice if either Brescia, the chair, or Langdon Chapman, the county attorney, worked for the good of the whole county and not just the county executive. Just a few reminders from minds, minds greater than ours of those of you that sit up there or those of us in the audience. The world will not be destroyed by evil, but by those who do nothing about the evil. Albert Einstein. Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. We are very unfortunately losing some of those legislators who were those people referenced above. Roseanne Sullivan, Matt Turnbull, Chris Ekus, Myrna Chemnitz, Jeff Berkman, they spoke for us, the people. As such, this legislative body in 2018 will have just what Republican Chair Courtney Canfield Green hoped for, a supermajority who will not represent all of us. Since we, the people, will not have a meaningful voice, we'll only have five Democrats on this body, it will be up to us, the people in the audience, to hold the county government accountable. Roseanne Sullivan has been silenced on this board. She was tried to be silenced when she sat here, and now she will be silenced because she will not be back. We can no longer look to Matt Turnbull and Jeff Berkman to rightly protest the lack of Democrats on key committees and positions. You see, it's now up to us. We may not be elected, but our voices will still need to be heard. And I say to that, um, Please conclude, Mary. Yes, this is what we, we love, cherish, and live and work here in the fabric of Orange County. I wish I had the time to play Matthew Good Witt's now, song. I'll yes. entertain a motion to We adjourn. will be You're here in 2018, whether you Please. like so it or not. Thank you. So rude.
Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to uh, say Happy Hanukkah to everybody. That's the last opportunity to everybody in the Orange County community and all the legislators and staff.